Hey everyone, welcome to Watch It Paint It. In this video, we're going to be looking at taking some paint out of the box, episode 3.472-F. I've done a lot of these. Uh, we're going to look at the new Speed Paint 2.0 complete box set just off of the bat. Is that the saying? I, I don't, I'm not very good with sayings. But I got this for free, guys. Bear that in mind as we go through. It's not really a review. I just want to show you what's in the box and all of the colors available. So bear that in mind. What is the complete set? Well, that is every single color of Speed Paint 2 that is available. It's the 50 from before, which I've just hurled across the room, as well as 40-ish new ones on top of that. So that's new colors. We in the paint development team, Dana Howell, Watch It Paint It, and Goober Town Hobbies have added to the mix, as well as the complete set of metallics. We had three in the previous set, there's now ten. So on top of those colours being added, this box comes with a couple of extra things. That's the new 100 milliliter speed paint medium. A lot of people in the comments asked that. We wanted it ourselves and it's great to see they've produced a massive bottle. And if you're into thinning your speed paints like we are, like a lot of people are, then you've got a lot of speed paint medium to work with and you can thin down all the colours for many, many, I want to say years, but depends how much you use it or how much you drink, doesn't it really? But it's going to last a lot longer than that small 18 mil, which is also included in it which I thought was quite funny you still get an 18 mil bottle but you get a massive amount too in the big boy bottle on top of that in the box it's going to come with a bunch of brushes three brushes in total you're going to get the monster brush which is quite a large brush it's really good it's probably one of the better ones for applying speed paint but you're going to get a base coating one which is a big step down from that and a tiny little detail one too so the other thing with this particular box of paints it's the first time we're going to see it I think it'll probably be rolled out for future prints as well but that's the standardized naming convention. The idea with that is there's a sort of practical naming convention. They're aiming at it for people who are visually sort of impaired or colorblind, that sort of thing. People who need a little bit of help determining what colors what. But honestly, guys, it, it, it's going to help everybody. They're trying to just make it much, much more clear what color is in each bottle. It's kind of hard to tell. Well, it's nearly impossible to tell from the bottle itself peering through it. Then they added the little colour wheel thing on the front which shows you the highlight, the mid-tones and the shadow which does help but it's still pretty inaccurate to the colours. So they've added this third option, this practical naming convention which will say you know bright yellow, pale yellow, darkish grey, bluish grey, that kind of thing. So give you an indication as to what it is. Now it'll take a little bit of learning because they've got words like brilliant in there and I'm off the top of my head I don't really know what that means. Does it mean it's the brightest version or is it just really really clever I'm not quite sure yet but we'll see and you'll get used to it and at least it's better than absolutely nothing and just trying to guess and I would like to think that that sort of word that brilliant word will apply across all of the color range so if you get a brilliant green it will have the same properties the same look as a brilliant blue other than obviously one's green and one's blue but it's a fantastic step in the right direction a lot of people asked for that in the comments and we loved the idea ourselves and Brent went out of his way to make that happen it was a great move on his part and I I think the army painting did really well adopting it and I, I think I don't can't think of another paint range that does it and I think it's a huge bonus. Just, I would like to see it rolled out across the whole range. It will be going forward. It was just something we added as part of the paint development team project and it just wasn't in the original print, the first run, but this box comes in the next run where the labels are changed. The other thing on the bottle that has changed is they now say speed paint 2.0 on the bottle so everybody will know exactly which is which and there can be no confusion in the shops and when they get to selling singles I think that'll be the case too so you'll know exactly what you're getting right I think that's everything new in this box completely covered so I think the next thing is to have a look at all 90 paints hang on that's not true there's a few extra little pieces you get a paint guide which is pretty standard in army painter it's actually quite good if you've never re read one give it a little flick through it's quite good but what's missing is anything about speed paint which is ironic given that it's also coming in the speed paint boxes but they've now included a little pamphlet a how to speed paint three basic steps and then finally you get some stickers i don't know why some of the speed paint colors are available in the stickers and others aren't my favorite ones aren't there so that's kind of sad <laughs> There's nothing more to look at in the box. We're going to go and put it on some miniatures. And for that, I've bought some of these fancy little paint bottle toppers. 
and we will be painting one of these each in each of those colors but we're going to take that practical name into the next level using these and i'm going to be physically able to see the colors on top of my paint bottles and know exactly which one i need for any given paint job so just to let you know guys these caps are made by paul at illusion fx 3d prints on etsy i'll leave a link in the description i am not affiliated i don't make any money if you like them check it out if you don't don't worry about it i just think it's a massive improvement for how i store my paints the next most important point to make is that you now need to pause, smash that like and subscribe button guys as I've just spent six hours painting up tops caps for my paints. I would advise if you go down this route to paint them up as and when you use the color, don't sit down, shake every single paint and do this. But let's get on with some paint and let's see what these look like. And most importantly, let's get some comparisons so you guys can see what is what. I'm gonna use stills in this video because hopefully you can pause and take in the colors, try and look at them between each ones and steal the stills if you want to compare and contrast across different color types. So let's move through what's actually new in the box. Let's start with the metallics. So there were three we've seen previously from the mega set, but there's seven new ones introduced here. The three before were the broadsword silver, the talus bronze and the hop like gold which you're fairly familiar with but you can see there's added multiple levels of gold. Now you've got that orangey golden armor, you've got hop like gold still, you've got glittering loot which again is a, a lighter orangey gold and then you've got Aztec gold which is a more green gold, more old fashioned, more antique. The Horde bronze also looks quite goldy but it is more of a bronze colour. To complement Talus bronze you're gaining brazen copper which is, you thought the Talus bronze were kind of ready, well the copper, this is massively red so you can really tell it's copper here. The bronze still looks kind of pinkish but this is definitely red copper and then you've gained two more silvers which is a polished silver which, which is just a lighter silver and then you've got my favorite of them all enchanted steel I, I just love that blue steel look it's a darker silver but it looks kind of bluey it's great for blue steel so the next little subset of paints are the pastel or pastel range and there's six in this little subset but there are some other pastel colors across the rest of the paints but these are very definitely pastel. You've got a sea foam which is a cross between a greeny blue, it's very pale. You've got indigo which is the blue pastel colour but it's quite a deep blue but pastel nevertheless. You've got the purple which is the lavender. You've got a pink which is princess pink and then you've got a sort of skin colour or salmon in this case which is the orange version and then you've got a little pastel yellow as well which looks very strong yellow. It's definitely pastel but it's the most one that you could just use for any sort of yellow when you just want a sort of kind of muted yellow. And then the third and final set of absolutely brand new paints not available in that mega set but they probably are going to be available in singles later on so don't worry if you purchase the mega set. But these are the rest of the colours that were developed by the paint development team. You've got the pastel colours and then you've got these. The metallics were already done by Army Painter but here you've got Blinding Light which is a new white much lighter than Holy White and a lot cooler I would say as well. You've got Howling Sand which is a creamy colour, fantastic addition to the set, I think it's always been missing that. Rigor Mortis is very similar, it has a little more red in it than the creamy version but great for dead skin that sort of thing. Speaking of dead skin you've also gained Maggot Skin which is a very pale muted pastel like green. Thunderbird Blue, another addition to the bluey green range, much stronger on the blue side. You've got Lizard Scion which is another strong deep dark greenish blue. You've got Mummified Grind which could be either with the browns or the sort of greys. It's it's that it's got that sort of dirt look and feel to it. And then you've got a burnish red, deep red going on to the brown side as well. Next I just want to talk you through all of the colours entirely. You'll see them duplicate a few times in these shots just because I wanted to give you them against different colours so you could kind of take in where they might sit in your palette. So we'll start with the whites to sort of blacky greys and I've included the speed paint medium here as well so you can sort of get the feel for what the topper looks just naked, just bright white. You've then got the blinding light which I think is the lightest of them all. Moving up holy white, then you've got ashen stone which is the darkest of the three grey. It's got a little hint of blue in it I would say which is why I've included battleship grey next to it which could easily be a blue really depending how you want to use it but it's a very blue grey. Then you've got runic grey which you're familiar with from speed paint one hopefully which again is a light blue Grey, Grave Lord Grey, which is fantastic deep grey there. And now that's been added to with Burnt Moss, which is a greeny dark grey, and Occultist Cloak, which is a bluey dark grey. So you've got this these deeper 
grey is now available with slight tones of green or blue, and then grim black's there just for you guys to take a comparison in and see what these all look like compared to each other. Blue's up next, and we'll start with the darkest, which is Tyrion Navy. Again, this could have been included in the grey section because it's it's a very, very dark blue, almost greyish. But if we remember the functional naming is included, you can actually see it's a blackish blue. I just said greyish off the top of my head. So you can see how that functional naming's kicking in. It's helping you identify what that color is. You've got cloudburst blue moving down and down and getting lighter and lighter and moving up to sort of adding green in as we move through this scale here. Back up to Plasmatic Vault, which you're familiar with from Speed Paint 1. A couple of new colors mixed in there, which you won't have seen in the Mega Set. As you can see that Lizard Folk Scion and Thunderbird Blue fitting in exactly between the blues and the greens here. Speaking of green, that's what we'll have a look at next. Again, this mummified grime could fit in the greys, it's arguable, or in the browns, but it's technically, well, you can, again, you can see it's got that functional name in greenish gray. So I could have included it in gray as I've put it here, but I think it just looks slightly more green than gray, but it's very, very dark and it's very, very gray. Then we can move through the range here. Uh, some of you are familiar with from Speed Paint 1. A bunch of these are in the mega set. In this particular edition, you can see that the maggot skins just added there on the end. Again, it's pastel like. It would fit in the pastels, to be honest, as the green, but it's also a great dead skin tone once more. It fits just below in paleness to that malignant green because it's got less yellow in it. It's closer to just a just a dead green, really. Next up, I'm going to group together the kind of pales, the yellowy, pale, sandy colours, along with the flesh, which you, at this point you've got yellowy, paleys, and browny colours, reddy colours in here as well. It's a bit of a mix, but these are quite pale slash skin tones, I would say, or light skin tones at least. So a bunch of these were available in the mega set, and then this time we've added in Howling Sand, which is a beautiful addition. Rigor Mortis, equally beautiful, I would say. They're very, very close. You've got a red slash green one and a yellowy one. Then moving on from those earthy colors, you've got these lightish skin tones that you can choose from here as well and put them all together. So you can see there's a big variation in the lighter skin tones available. Moving on to yellows to orange, nothing new here that isn't in either in Speed Paint 1 or the Mega Set, but you can see the beautiful brightness of the mage yellow, the deeper ancient honey, and you can now see that zealot yellow right next to them and see how orange that really was in comparison, which was the yellow we were using for over a year, but people have said it was orange, and you can really see it here now. Now you've got two very, very yellow choices to choose from, and that's not including the pastel yellow. I should have stuck this in here, but you could imagine that's a very faded version of those two. Sand Golem you'll be used to, and then you've got the Nucleus Sunrise, which is actually the like least bright of all the oranges, and I've included the bright red here because it's very definitely an orangey red. Speaking of red, I've put bright red back in here so you can see how it compares to the reds, definitely on the oranger side. In fact, once again, look at that practical naming, which very clearly says reddish orange. It's very obvious now I'm looking at this in post and seeing all the colors, and it might have helped me lay them out in the order, which is most useful to you guys. Guys. But yeah, these are the reds that are available. Moving on to that purpley red on the end, which is Murder Scene, which brings us on to the purpley colors, but also including the pinks. So you've got that bright ass familiar pink now, that vivid pink is very, very bright, very, very bold. And then you can move through the original pink, which I guess was that purple alchemy, which just looks purple now in comparison. But as it says in the functional naming, it's a strong pink, not the vivid pink that we've now got. Through here, nothing new that wasn't either in Speed Paint 1 or the Mega Set, but you get to see them all together now, which Brings us on to our final subset, which is the browns, the deeper earths, and the darker skin tones that we have available in the complete set. Plenty of orangey browns available to the left, to the greeny browns available on the right, and everything in between there. You've got reddy browns, and browny browns, and blacky browns as well. A beautiful range here, especially if you're trying to paint, paint darker skin tones with some names that do them justice as well. Well guys, that is completely it for this video. Thank you ever so much for watching. I hope that was some help for you guys seeing these colors together. To finally show you them all together and but I don't know how to take a picture of all of them with the bottles in. We need some sort of crazy panoramic view, which you then wouldn't be able to see them all anyway. Any questions, please fire them off below. Any suggestions for anything you would like to see. There's not much left to cover on this Speed Paint 2.0 range. We'll just do some painting tutorials so you can see these used in anger. But yeah, by all means, leave some suggestions, some comments, and let us know your top three favorite colors of Speed Paint. Thank you all ever so much for watching and see you again soon.